However, I think that the launching of the report is very timeless. It comes at a time uh, in South Africa where I think we're facing some of the biggest challenges in terms of energy uh, that we've ever had, but also in terms of not only energy, but many other industries. Uh, water is on the horizon as well. I'll say something about that uh, just in a, a short while. We had to, of course, define green technology. Uh, and we had, we spent like just about a morning figuring out what we, which definitions we're going to use. So the definitions we eventually used was to say, well, well, the green economy coming out of the United Nations Environmental Program Report, it's one that results in improved human well-being and social equity while significantly reducing environmental risks and ecological scarcities. It is low carbon, resource efficient, and socially inclusive. Now that is mouthful. Uh, so you measure the work that you do, and you make the recommendations in this framework here. And green technologies per se is the development and application of products, equipment, systems, uh, and processes used to conserve the natural environment and resources which minimizes and reduces the negative impact of uh, human uh, activities. So we worked with this as our definition of the green economy and green technologies, and the real objectives of the green technology can to some extent be summarized in the sentence there that is in bold. And I want you to just take a minute to read that and think about it. It says it is to decouple economic growth from negative ecological impacts and excessive resource use. Now we are to a large extent a resource economy in South Africa. We take a lot of things out of the soil, a lot of raw materials, and we add value to them in some cases, and then we export them and so on, but we're a resource-based economy. So the, the challenge here that we have not only in South Africa, but also worldwide, is how do we grow the economy? Because we can't stop the growth of the economy. We can't say, well, we have no growth, or we will have a negative economic growth. We need to grow the economy. The challenge is how do you grow the economy? at a rate that is sufficient to provide jobs without, in fact, negatively impacting on the environment. That's the challenge. There are examples, of course. I mean, there are new technologies that have emerged over years which have created new economies which don't impact that much on the resource base. I'll just mention that one or two. The one is uh, Google, as an example. Most of you know Google, the Google economy, or Facebook. Uh, you might even think, to a lesser extent, of the cell phone um, economy, which uh, if these are new economies that emerge which are less resource intensive than what we have. So we will need many, many more of those uh, sort of uh, economies developing whilst we are using and basing our economy on resources. Uh, the, the question then is how do we optimally utilize our resources? So we minimize the damage to the environment, minimize the greenhouse gases, the GHG, greenhouse gas emissions, safe to use, promote a healthy and improved environment, conserve the energy that we use and the natural resources, promote the use of renewable resources, and lastly, in the South African context, we say, well, how do we also create jobs? Now, green tech, of course, as was illustrated in the overview, goes considerably beyond just the more narrow concerns of climate change. Uh, and in alignment with the recommendations contained in this report, outside of the climate change area, the DST has, spend, has spearheaded the development of research, development and innovation roadmaps in waste and, uh, and water sectors, respectively. These sectors have been identified as niche areas of focus that the DST will drive through the support that we provide for research, development and innovation activities as part of the Global Change Research Plan. The waste research roadmap has been approved by the DST executive and will be presented to the minister and ultimately to cabinet for approval in due course. The water roadmap, water research roadmap, will be finalized by the end of this financial year and will also go through the approval processes right up to cabinet later on.